Good morning, good folk. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, back with another kitchen counter thrift haul. I'm finishing up my second cup of coffee in my Jade ID handled, handled mug by Anchor Hawking, so let me have a sip of that. You have a sip of yours, and then let's take a look at what's on the counter here. Mm hmm. Just a variety of things from the turn of the century. No, I lie. There's one item on this counter that goes back to the late 19th century. Can you figure out which one it is, the late 19th century? Well, it certainly is not Peter Rabbit over here. Okay, I think our lighting crew might have uh, taken care of that overexposure problem. Uh, getting ready for the Easter holiday, uh, which is late this year, late in February. <laughs> Late in April, April 17th or something like that, um, homemade ceramics are popular among many collectors. He's very nicely done. Very proud that he's winking his eye. He's found the egg. Remember Easter egg hunts in the yard? I certainly do. And uh, he's, uh, oh, about 10 inches tall. Now down here, which you can't see, I have one, two, three, four, five, a collection of five flower frogs, all made of glass, and I'll hold them up individually. They're all different sizes, with different levels, numbers of holes on the inside. There's one. And here's two, which is similar, but it has a domed top. These things are rarely ever marked by the maker, and these glass frogs, you've really got to know your business to know who, you know, which company made which one. All right, here's the third one, very tall and chunky, with three little feet to stand it up inside of a console bowl. We always talk about those console bowls, and these frogs are what sat down inside of many of them. Another one that's domed. Okay, so there's five in all. One, two, three, four, five. You're going to get all five. Whether you put candy canes in them, ink pens, paint brushes, lipsticks, or flowers, they're, uh, or use them as paperweights. They're fun things to have. Okay, that's a lot of five. Mm, let's just work down the line. Here's a beautiful sauce serving bowl or probably a mayonnaise or a sauce or a jelly or whatever you'd like to use it for. Normally these were mayonnaise serving dishes. And this one is um, a piece of Limo a piece of uh, porcelain from France manufactured in the Limoges region. I always, I probably for 20 years I thought Limoges was a company. Of course you and I know it's a, um, a, des it's a physical place in France where there were, oh, eight, nine, ten companies, maybe twelve, making fine porcelain. Uh, this one, uh, Tressman and Vogt, V-O-G-T, you just get the T and the V on the bottom. France, probably sold as a blank and then painted, decorated by someone else. And the decorator did a nice job, and he or she did 
give us their initials, which I hope, hope you can see. It's nicely gilded, pretty, delicately done. I love how the uh, bowl and the plate are connected into one. So a nice piece of uh, French porcelain Limoges Trussman and Vacht. I'll put that back down here. And that's damage free. I better go and order or I'm going to skip something. Okay, let's go back here to a wonderful Art Deco uh, liquor decanter, which I've already told you about this, haven't I? Haven't I already told you about this? I'm certain that I have, so let's put it back. There's no uranium in it. It doesn't glow. I already told you about that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm being repetitive. Now, hold your breath, but don't hold your breath. Um, yes, it's authentic 1938 Walt Disney, and if you look very closely, you're going to see the problem with poor old Dopey here. Let's turn him over this way and let you see the Walt Disney... Uh, 1938 Walt Disney, I guess it's Enterprises there. You see that? So Snow White. But uh, Dopey was knocked over and was decapitated. Either that or he was in the French Revolution. I don't know which one. But it was a clean break, glued back on. He's not been overpainted, and he doesn't have chips really anywhere else. Okay, minor right here. The neck break is a big deal. But it is an original, you know, this was brand new in 1938, right? So one bookend. <clears throat> I've got the opening bid very low uh, on eBay. So if you're a Disney fan and you don't mind poor old uh, Dopey's uh, neck surgery there, you might be able to pick him up very inexpensively for a Disney collector or for yourself. I was excited when I found that in the thrift shop. Oh, can't wait to put this on the hi-fi and see what happens. This isn't for sale. I'm keeping German favorites of the early 1950s. Okay, we won't go into that. Uh, maybe I should play it for you later. I don't know if you can stand it. By the Dugan Glass Company, we have a wonderful marigold basket in Carnival. I am starting to sell some of the marigold Carnival pieces that I have. It's a clear piece of glass, of course, it almost always is in marigold, and we can see that. And then it's a nice basket weave, 1910 to 1920, something like that, Dugan Glass Company. Nice iridescence on it. You don't have to wait for autumn to decorate in this color. Yeah, all right, let's put him down. Now, I know I skipped something in the middle. Let's talk about that, and it might surprise you. My favorite piece on this counter. No, not the green deco decanter, although you might think so. It's this wonderful little old pressed glass uh, kerosene lamp or lantern here which is beginning to turn purple. You may or may not be able to see that in this light. And a lot of you know that that's, collectors call that sun glass. Now, it didn't start out with a purple tint. And, um, but the ultraviolet light, this sat in a window and it soaked up a bit of ultraviolet light. And something happens between the iron and the manganese. They get together and they turn purple. You put this in the, a window and it'll continue to turn purple sunglass collectors call it some people collectors don't like it they say the glass is ruined when it turns purple other folks really enjoy it. I think it's quaint on a little lantern like this now we have a uh, banner burner and we can see here uh, on the thumb screw here to adjust the wick uh, P and A company and that's Waterbury Connecticut will that focus for you of course it won't get in there of course it won't no okay so be it 
Plume and, is it Plume and Atwood? I don't remember, but uh, here's a picture of the factory. Let's take a look at that. Boy, that's a beautiful ivory-covered building there. Plume and whatever it is. I think it says Atwood. Uh, there in uh, Waterbury, Connecticut, uh, where this wonderful thing was made in the late, uh, before the turn of the century. Not the last one, but the one before that. So we're probably in the 18, uh, 1880s, 90s, maybe as late as 1900, uh, pressed glass, just, you know, to carry around the house. I like this. Just think about some old Philadelphian creeping around in his row house or her row house at in the dark of night <laughs> with this little candle, with this little lamp lit. Uh, you get a chimney for it and get you some oil in there and it'll burn just fine. You can go to any camping store, hardware store and get uh, the lamp oil for this and uh, it, you can pretend it's 1890. This is my favorite thing. No chips, no cracks, and I love that. P completely function, functionable. Functionable? It functions. Conjunction, junction. By the way, I think we just lost the singer of that tune. Did we not? Did I hear something on NPR? The guy who sang Conjunction, Junction, What's Your Function? I think he just passed away. Fabulous Kitty. Sorry, Teddy fell down. We'll talk about him in a minute. Look at that iridescent purple, blue, green, yellow, fierce looking kitty statue. Looks like glass. It feels like pottery. Uh, and it is, it's ceramic. And it actually says on the bottom, I don't know whether I should read this or not because it's, we've got all the names, but 1987 from Dawn and Ed. Uh, and then Dawn and Ed give their last name. I guess I will cover that up. <laughs> the the new owner will will see it, but we don't all need to get go looking for Dawn and Ed. But Dawn and Ed, okay, well that's who made it and gave it to somebody, and here it is. So he's pottery, and he's fierce. No chips, no cracks. Love that. Yeah. All right, Teddy fell down, but that's okay. We'll stand him back up. He's an adorable little uh, cardboard teddy bear. He was in the estate where all those Valentines uh, a while back that I bought. And so he's going to date to around 19, sometime, sometime between 1915 to 1925, probably in the 20s. We'll say right around 1920. And we can, uh, because he, that's, he was in that lot and you can just tell by the construction and the, the way he's printed and everything. There's absolutely nothing on him. And he stands up. Right? No one signed anything. We've got no indication of who made him or what he was given for. But the teddy bear was popular at that time. And uh, he's got little little scrapes here and there on his face, but he, he's not, um, no tape, no water stains, no rips, no tears. So we'll put him up for sale in the old curiosity shop and he'll, he'll stand up. There is a little crease here, okay, on this leg, but he doesn't have any uh, scotch tape on him. So we're happy about that. Here's a mixing bowl in pink. I can't remember whether it's Federal or Anchor Hocking. It's not Jeanette. They both had um, bottoms that looked something like this, but it's a nice, I think, seven and a half rolled edge inch uh, nesting bowl, mixing bowl from the Depression era in pink, in good shape. No cracks, no chips, just a few scratches from all of the snickerdoodles Granny was whipping up back in the day. So there's a 19... 30s mixing bowl and now into the 50s we recognize the anchor hocking swirl we love them in jadeite but there are lots of folks who have black and white kitchens and there's one of the nesting bowls we're familiar with the uh, anchor hocking on the bottom so uh, great shape uh, I can't remember. The measurements are in the auction site, so you can go and check that out. This little Made in Japan owl is from September. <laughs> or he's, I guess it was one for, owl, oh my gosh, that's a cat. 
That's a cat. What a mistake to make. Uh, and that kitty is all ready for school with his eyeglasses and apple for the teacher and his books and bow and everything. And that little foil sticker right there says made in Japan. And it took me about half an hour to get in close enough to see it. Uh, it's damage free and just a cute little September kitty cat. Okay. And now let's go to the uh, Imperial Glass Company. Imperial, yeah. And let's do one more piece of carnival. Here's a little nappy type of a bowl. Great for candy corns next Easter. <laughs> Boy, I, just forget it. Just stop, forget it. Edit, edit it out. You're as funny as a cry for help. Next Halloween or next fall time. Mm-hmm. Hey, you want to put jelly beans in it? Go ahead. I like how this looks like a piece of wood. And again, it's marigold <clears throat> on a clear base uh, carnival glass with a basket with some flowers on the inside. What are they? Are they pansies? I don't know. I can't see very well. And then a quilted uh, pattern on the outside. Very different. So here's carnival. So we're pre-1920 on that. <clears throat> and also by Imperial, we get up into the 30s and we get their Tree of Life console bowl, which has got the Tree of Life all over it, and it is stippled. I love this thing. I already have one. In fact, I've got one with the two matching candlesticks. That's the reason why uh, I'm selling this one, because it's a duplicate and I don't need it. So if you, if you like this, it wouldn't be everybody's taste. I love it. You can find the candlesticks. <clears throat> yeah. Imperial Tree of Life. So a rolled edge bowl, <clears throat> which is small enough when you put the candles on either side to be used as a console bowl, but then it's small enough to also be used for a candy dish if you'd like or something else. But I love that design. It, it looks like a brain almost. But it's beautiful amber honey colored amber glass which I was not a fan of for my entire life until about three years ago and all of a sudden I woke up in the middle of the night and I love amber glass now I don't know why I've come to appreciate it especially if it's from the 1920s and 30s the more honey it looks the more I like it rather than brown so that's a I love that thing and then here's a little kitchen piece uh, with an Art Deco style. It's a little bowl. Now these things, unmarked, they either had a beater attachment that sat on here that you cranked by hand to beat the eggs or, or whatnot. We've all seen those. It'd be a metal lid that would just sit right in here <clears throat> with the beater attached to it. But they also had electric tops that would go on here with the motor and everything that sits on the top and the electric cord goes into the outlet and you flip a switch and it will beat electronically. I don't know which was on this. I have a feeling it might have had the electric top that went to it. But uh, either way, it's gone and we just have the bottom. But it's that, mm, you can't see in this light. It's this, I love this milk glass. It's the old formula, the old 30s and 40s milk glass that has the opalescence in it. You know, what they, when you hold it up, you get what they call the ring of fire. And so that there's almost a translucence to it uh, rather than being not translucence. Uh, yeah, that might be what I'm thinking of rather than completely uh, opaque, like the thick, thick, white, white milk glass of later. Yeah, these are, these are, it's hard to, to, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and it's, it's kind of deco in its design. So that's for the kitchen. And then finally, I am going to keep one and sell one if anybody wants one. I don't know that anybody does. Probably from the early 1960s, we have two floodlights here to be used inside or out. Uh, new old stock, the lamps are in there. Uh, I'm keeping one because I like the box and I really like, I'll take you, let you take a look at the side here and we can see all the different 
places where you're supposed to just, you can tell by the graphics on here that we're probably in the early 60s. It could be the late 50s, but probably the 60s. Love that. So that's the box with all the information on it. And as I said, the light bulb is in there. Okay, so that's that. Uh, this is not listed. I, I really just, I will list it, but I just haven't listed it yet. Hey, if anybody's interested, let me know and I'll, I'll hop on it and get it listed right away. Okay, that's it. All of the things to bring you today in the old curiosity shop. I had fun sharing all of these items with you. As I told you, they're uh, listed and up for sale right now for anyone who's interested. The link to the store is in the description box below. That's it. Thanks for watching. I'm Scott from the old curiosity shop. Wait for the cat. So long for now.